Hey, and just a quick reminder that the audio-only versions of these Vital MX interviews are available on the Vital MX podcast page. Search for it anywhere you get your pods and let your friends know about it. Hey, guys. Dark Side here with Vital MX. Got a special guest tonight. It's late Friday night, and I've got Hep Motorsports' Kyle Chisholm on the phone. What's up, Chiz? Oh, what's going on? I'm, uh, I'm just at the airport in Salt Lake City. Sorry if it's a little noisy. But yeah, I just had my layover, and I'm headed home. A little red eye and get home to my girls. And uh, yeah, I had, had a good week out in California. And yeah, just had it home. Yeah, some big news dropped yesterday. First, I think the last time we talked, your plan was to do your own deal for Supercross 2023. And everything changed yesterday for us. And then, you know, the, the news was broke that you are you signed a multi-year deal with Hep Motorsports. Yeah, yeah, I'm super excited. And yeah, like you said, as we talked before, uh, you know, that was pretty much the plan all along, you know, I, I've done well, like doing my my own deal, my own program uh, the last three years. So um, Yamaha was, has been great, and uh, yeah, just planned on in Rock River, all my smart, all my sponsors, partners, you know, the last few years, and uh, yeah, that was the plan. Just you know, keep doing that, keep building on it, and um, had a some interest from from Hep, and I know Aaron and Dustin, those guys from you know, really from when I wrote for them in 2019 and, uh, stayed in touch, stayed friends, hung out, you know, said hi, go to dinner sometimes. And, um, yeah, just still had a good relationship and they reached out to me. Um, I don't know, probably, probably a month or so ago and kind of made me an offer, but wasn't really what I was looking to do. Um, so we talked a little bit, got me out there and rode the bike, did some testing for them. And that kind of just turned into, um, a little bit more of, you know, what I say, what I you want to do, it was, you know, I didn't want to just, you know, switch bikes or something for, for no reason. I liked what I was doing, but then when we went out there and I tested work with them, you know, Larry Brooks is there now, you know, they're really trying to up the team and the program and grow it and expand it. And when we went out there, I rode the bike and, uh, we just worked really well together. Um, had a good, like three days of, testing and um yeah like i said after that they kind of came at me with you know hey we would love to do you know more than just hey come race for us for one year you know it was more you know they see some value and help, help me helping develop it and in some other areas in the team and for me that was just a really really great opportunity um you know we always joke about it but i just turned 35 you know a couple days ago and uh, I can't race forever. Um, I I wish I could. I think other people wish I could too, but I can't. Or maybe people think I can, but I know I can't. And uh, yeah, so for me, you know, it's just uh, it, it. I think it'll be. Uh, I'm looking at it as like a a good uh, potential transition. You know, like I said, at some point in the next few years, I won't be able to race. You know, maybe full time. You know, anymore. Maybe I don't want to. And it gives me a nice a role that I can add value, bring value to, you know, to the team and they're growing. And like I said, it just was good timing. Um, and just, like I said, just makes a lot of sense for me. I get to race, I get to help the team in in multiple ways, you know, add value other than just racing on Saturday. So, uh, yeah, just really excited for the opportunity and uh, happy to be able to, to do it. And, and also thankful for all my sponsors the last few years that, you know, help me, you know, get to where I am and have this opportunity. So yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah. You mentioned your age a minute ago. And of course, anytime you do an interview now, we're going to talk about your age. It's just part of it. <laughs> were you surprised that, a, you know, it's a Suzuki factory supported team but calls you at your age to come be a part of it. Is that a surprise at all? Um, yes and no. Um, you know, like I said, I've, I, I, I you know, you know me, I, I don't like like, bragging about myself whatsoever i don't like think i'm cool anything like that. i'm just a normal dude but i've done for what i'm doing and doing my own thing and you know being a privateer no matter how much math it says i'm not you know whatever but uh you know i i've done better the last few years and done well and, and even as i've gotten older i've done better um so on that hand not really that surprising like i said i've had a good relationship with with dustin and aaron and, and the guys at app and um and like i said it's not like i've been sucking the last couple of years, but I guess it was a little bit of a surprise when they, when we sat down and they're like, Hey, you know, look, we want to offer you this opportunity, you know, to race and also help grow the team and be a part of that 
that side of it as well. That was kind of not expected at all. And like I said, when that was, you know, offered to me and that to have that opportunity, you know, it was a, a really awesome thing. Cause that's, to be honest, you know, I, I don't want to say that I was even looking for that, but I think like subconsciously or like deep down, that's something that I kind of always hoped for without even like really knowing it to even express it to like a team. So I get, I think just when they kind of, we did so much testing when they, I, you know, I think, you know, with Larry as well, kind of saw some of that value that I could bring already knowing the potential of like Kenny being there. Um, I was just like, man, I can't believe they just offered me that. That's like perfect scenario for me, you know, where I'm at in my career. And yeah, it was just, it was just a, a great opportunity, great timing, like I said. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm just, I'm just pumped to do it. So a little surprised that that, that was offered to me. But like I said, it's something that I kind of un, even self unknowingly kind of had hope for. And mm-hmm. um, when they said those words, I'm like, man, that's exactly makes sense for me. Like I, like I said, I didn't even like realize it. And I'm like, that, that would be amazing. You know, so we worked it all out and, and uh, yeah, it's just, it was awesome. Is you, the press release says multi-year deal. Is it two or three, or can you even say? Uh, it, it's, uh, I, I, you know, I mean, I could probably get, I could get in trouble, but it's <laughs> is what it is. It's two, and there's an option for the for a third, and it's, it the option is more or less, it, again, it it's without getting into too much detail. The the option of the third year is more or less, um, I, I'm trying to remember how it's worded, more or less just mutually agreeing between me and the team the role that i'll play in the team you know because i i potentially could keep racing yeah. if i want to um so there's that i could you know do some races you know like kind of like almost like a justin brayton you know maybe he'll do well i don't know what he's doing but i've heard maybe this year he doesn't do ama maybe he does a couple and he does world supercross you know it could be something like that you know, as well as testing, you know, bike development with the team. And, and I would love to get into more of a management role, you know, if the team grows and, and, you know, and I can add value in that way. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's two years. And then the third is it, I, like I said, I think it's like a mutually, a mutually agreed on role, um, of what I'll, you know, the role I'll play with the team. Okay. So, yeah. Are the, yeah. the two years, is it U S and world Supercross, is, or is there, is it specified I, what you'll be doing? I, I kind of have, it's not really specific. I kind of have the option. Um, I would love to do world Supercross, but honestly, uh, we were already talking and I'm not, not to get too far ahead of ourselves because <laughs> I don't know for sure at all yet. Um, I, I would love to do both. You know, I, I would obviously do Supercross, you know, AMA Supercross. I'd love to do world Supercross. And that is, I think the general consensus of like what I want to do and like kind of what we would plan to do, but especially just seeing the schedule that just came out, you know, I've already told them like, you know, I would probably like to go do a few outdoors as well. You know, we'll cross that bridge as it gets closer, but I could see myself doing, you know, AMA supercross world supercross, you know, and doing a few outdoors and, you know, I'd love to qualify myself into the, the new super motocross stuff too. Um, I think there might be like, the last one's like a conflicting date with world supercross, but I'd love to, you know, if I can do well, qualify myself into that and do those races too. Jeez. You um, might race more this yeah, year so than we'll you, as it goes. <laughs> you might race more this year than ever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but I think that it, it's not nothing specific. Um, I kind of could do like we talked obviously beforehand. And like I said, everything's fluid because you never know what could change between now and then. But uh, the, the general plan is for me to do, Supercross and World Supercross on 450 okay. uh, for both. So when you mentioned the schedule for World Supercross starts July 1st, uh, yep. was that when you saw that schedule? Was that pretty enticing? I mean, six six rounds, six countries, including France, Germany, uh, Canada, mm-hmm. Southeast Asia, somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I love traveling. I, I always have um, going to going to those places, getting to race a dirt bike, and get paid to go do it. You know, it's it's awesome. I if you didn't love traveling, maybe you wouldn't think it's cool, but I love traveling, experiencing, seeing the world, different cultures and, and all that. And love to be able to bring my family with, you know, when I can and just get that experience. And, uh, so that, that's super exciting for me to be honest, being selfish because I'm like, cause that's my thoughts towards it. <laughs> I wish there was more. Uh, I heard there may be eight and who knows, maybe they'll add a couple. So I was hoping for more. Um, and yeah, like I said, either way, I'm, I'm pumped to get to go do that. And, uh, yeah, I, I will say I didn't expect there to be such a gap 
between the rounds. You know, I think what it's like July 1st, July 22nd, September 30th. Yeah. Then like two in October and then the end of November, they're very spaced out over like what a four or five month span. And, uh, I was hoping they would be a little bit more condensed. That's going to be tough, you know, just from like a training standpoint to, you know, you want to cram, you know, a month or two of training and then go race for six, eight weeks where it's going to be like, okay, I got to be ready in July. Then I got to be ready the end of September. Then I got to be ready October and then the end of November. It's going to be really kind of drug out through the, through the summer. So I think you're going to really have to balance um, managing your training and prep for that, you know, because you can't peak in July for the first race or whatever and expect to be still peaking in November after racing Supercross for, you know, here for five months, you know, whatever. So that'll be a challenge. Um, but like I said, I, I enjoy the challenge and, and all that. And uh, yeah, that, that was a surprise to me, the spa- how spaced out, uh, spread out the races are. But uh, yeah, I love the schedule. I love the countries they're going to. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to see where I can squeeze some more in. Uh, I'm already, <laughs> I was looking at where you know the Paris uh, Supercross is. I'm like, okay, how can I get into that one? Go from there to Australia. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Awesome. You mentioned that you've been on, on the bike a little for a while now, uh, develop, doing some developing and testing. So did you ride it before Kenny rode it, before he considered coming, or how did that schedule work out? Yeah, so uh, that was part of, like I, backing up a little bit, like I was saying earlier, um, when the team kind of had made me an offer, and uh, I was kind of like, ah, you know, it just doesn't make sense enough for me, you know, to leave what I'm doing, and I was, but I was still working on some things with my own program and um just more details to kind of still kind of get ironed out you know just to know exactly where my own thing was so in the meantime i was like you know hey you know look i'm i'm probably leaning towards my own thing but i'm still waiting on stuff so yeah what's the harm why don't y'all come out and ride the bike and they kind of mentioned you know me coming out and just some testing some stuff you know whatever as well so i'm like you know hey you know what's the harm let's go out and just see how it is let's see the bike and uh get out there, ride it, and just kind of go from there. In the meantime, waiting on some answers on my own deal. Let's just see, you know, what this could be, and uh, we'll just kind of go from there. So that's kind of upfront understanding of that. And, um, yeah, man, I rode the bike. I tested a lot for, like, three days, uh, working mainly on, like, the chassis and handling, um, just rigidity and comfort and cornering and stability and all that stuff, just trying to improve the bike. And, uh, you know, as much as we could. And I already knew, you know, I'm friends. I ride with Kenny, um, you know, at home. And I already kind of knew that that was the plan. And I think a lot of the public even knew that, you know, that that he was going to be going out there at some point. Um, so a lot of what I did was, or I would say part of what I did was to set the bike up um, as a starting point for Kenny. For those that listened to my stuff before on my Yamaha stuff, just like I kind of did with Eli setting that that new 23 Yamaha 450 up for him to ride it, you know, back during Supercross. So, yeah, it was uh, essentially the same thing to go out there and do that on the Suzuki, you know, for me personally, because I had the offer from them, um, but also to set the bike up, you know, to get it in a good place for Kenny to come out and hop on it and and see what he thought of it. And, um, again, not sure what I could say, can't say, whatever, but needless to say, um, he's changed the suspension setting, um, just a little bit like a pretty minor uh suspension change since i set it up uh the three days of testing that i did um he got on it i think everyone's seen the videos at this point he honestly i've seen him ride all the time you know during the week on his honda the last you know six years and i I don't want to come out and say he looks better on the bike you know by you know not saying it talking bad or anything but he looks amazing on the bike. He looks really good on it. I think, you know, you guys can see that in the video. He really does look good on it. And yeah, I think he's just changed uh, a fork setting and a shock setting just a little bit. Other than that, it's, you know, basically the way I set it up. And that was, you know, three days of, of testing. You know, I don't know. We probably tested 10 different engine mount combinations mm. and, and different clamps and all, all kinds of stuff um, to, to kind of get it to where I thought it was the best. And uh, yeah, Kenny got on it. He had the option to kind of go through all that stuff as well. And he got on it and he's like, 
man, he called me the first day. He's like, man, this thing's amazing. Way more, <laughs> way better than I expected. He's like, this really changes, you know, my, my plans. Um, obviously he did really well in Paris, um, with the, whatever, I don't, the firepower Honda yeah, team, your Reeves team. You know, whatever yeah. it's called and, uh, did really well. Um, I think maybe even he expected to, you know, maybe try the bike, but still, you know, after having that good week in Paris to maybe still be doing that, I kind of expected it, you know, and, and I was basically out there, um, just thinking back when they were in Paris racing, I was in California testing the Suzuki, uh, for HEP. So I was talking to Kenny while he was over there, you know, kind of letting know how things were going. And, um, yeah, like I said, I got it set up as well as I could. He went from there to California, hopped on the bike. And like I said, to, to this day, I think it's just a suspension setting change that, that he's done and it, it's, he's good to go. He likes the bike and looks really good on it. And, um, yeah, I'm still trying some more things, trying to just keep improving it, but yeah, I set it up. He liked it. <laughs> and like I said, I don't think he was even expecting to do it and he, the bike really surprised him and yeah, that's, that's what he's doing. So it was awesome to be a part of that as well. And like I said, that's, that's what makes this whole opportunity for me. Um, I guess selfishly really satisfying, you know, like it's, I, I enjoy that. I think I'm good at it. Um, the team saw that I'm just thankful for the opportunity with them to, like I said, to have more of a role than just being a racer. You know, I think I can add value in that way. And I think I have so far with Kenny, you know, getting on board. And I think we have another pretty good rider coming out. Unfortunately with Brandon getting injured, potentially have another good rider, you know, to, to try to fill in for Brandon, like I said, bummer. Um, with, with him getting injured, he was riding really well. He was out there when I was out there. Um, but I think we have, you know, some other, you know, another good guy maybe to come out to, for the time being to, to get on the, another good rider on the bike yeah. and just show, you know, what we can do. Yeah. So. You don't have to confirm, but I heard Shane's coming to ride it. So, uh, but we talking about the development thing though, real quick. Yeah. You must be doing pretty good at this just based off what you just said about Kenny, not changing much. And we already talked previously about the stuff you did for Eli, and you told me how much he liked it. And I asked him about it in Paris, and then I interviewed him just a couple nights ago. And I, I specifically asked him, I said, how when a guy like Kyle Chisholm comes and develops a bike for a guy like yourself, and it's different style of riding, how close can somebody actually get it for you? And he said, man, about 90%, and then the last 10% is on me. Uh, so he seemed very, very pleased with what you're doing. So as we've talked over the last couple of years, we're like, well, what's post-race life look like for Kyle Chisholm? This development thing may be right up your alley, right? I mean, it seems like it's just you're falling right into place. Yeah, like I said, I I, I, I enjoy it. I, it lets me ride a motorcycle, right? Obviously, I, I even when I'm done racing, I, I, I love riding dirt bikes, right? So I always see myself doing that, you know, at some capacity, even when I'm not racing full time. I'm retired from racing. Um, and I, I enjoy it. So I enjoy riding. I enjoy testing and I'm very sensitive on the bike to feeling things and, and, and all that. So I think it's, you know, with, and with that, I think I'm, I'm good at it. Like I said, I hate saying that even about myself. I don't want to come off as like bragging, but I think it is a, a, a something God blessed me with. I'm very good at feeling and in, in testing things and giving feedback and, to giving the right feedback to the to the the people that are smarter than me in developing some of these things and you know coming up with them um so yeah like i said i i would what this opportunity kind of gives me that role to transition into you know and like i said that's why it just really fit perfect you know i like i said it, the timing worked out the team is in a very big growing uh stage to really up the team um like we've said they've hired larry they've hired dave cruz on suspension and just trying to up the team. And when I went out there, saw what I did and set the bike up and they offered me that, um, I guess that, that wasn't the initial offer, um, which I probably wasn't going to do, um, because it just was more of a sidestep to what I was doing on my own. But when that got brought up that I would have a role more than just being a racer with the team that I'm like, that's exactly what I feel like I could really add value, you know, along with some other things, but that's perfect for what i you know what I would love to, to have the opportunity to show my value, you know, in, in what I could do. So, um, yeah. And like, and to touch on what, like what you talked with Eli on, it's funny because like for Eli, the testing I did with them, like with Yamaha for, for Eli on that new bike, I wouldn't say that I 
I definitely didn't set it up for me, you know, um, just for people that maybe didn't hear or whatever. I basically rode his current bike, his 2022, the bike he won everything on this year. I rode that bike and then I rode the new bike. And I had to basically piece by piece figure out what works on the new bike from his old bike because he really liked the new but the he really liked the 22 clearly he did well on it so i had to go piece by piece what works on it what doesn't work on it you know what translates from the 22 to the 23 get a good base setting that's similar because he really liked that bike that still feels similar to give him a good starting point to hop on the 23 and it was either I like it. I'm signing the contract or I don't. And maybe he doesn't sign the contract. So that's kind of what I was faced with to, to do. So it wasn't really signing the bike up for me. It was so, so it's not like, Oh, I don't like that. I, I like this. I don't like that. I like this. It was like, well, even if I don't really like that basing Eli's bike on what he did like, I have to go, well, even though I don't like that or something, he must have liked it because that's what was on his bike. You know, that's how his bike felt in that turn or that bump. I've got to make this bike, even if it's not right for me, I need to make this bike feel like that bike or similar, right? So that's like the mentality I had to have testing for Eli. For Kenny, I've ridden his bikes, you know, off the record, you know, you know, keep it, keep it between us and the listeners. <laughs> I've ridden his Honda and, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I kind of know the way he likes his bike set up. We ride together a lot. I don't ride with Eli at all, but I ride with Kenny a lot. I've ridden his bikes. He's ridden, I won't say anymore, I've ridden his bikes. Um, <laughs> uh, I know how he likes his bike set up. We're very similar in how we do like it set up. So with Kenny, it really wasn't like Eli. I kind of set the bike up for Eli, not really for myself. Yeah. On this yeah, video you- with Hap, I set it up for me, but also I – I also kind of knew that's going to be what Kenny's going to like as well because we're very similar in the way we like the bike set up. So yeah, it's, it was different. Uh, same prints, you know, same thing. I had the same job, but I couldn't go about it the same way. So like I said, I, I really enjoy that challenge and doing it. And yeah, I'm glad I was able to do a good job for both of those guys. And uh, yeah, I hope to just keep doing that more in the future. Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple more questions. You still have some time. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm good. I'm just sitting here, man. Okay, well, I, didn't know, I couldn't remember. You said you had a couple hours, but I just wanted to double check. Um, yeah. So you've rode Suzuki back in the day, 2019, and you were with HEP, obviously. How much has the team changed in just a few years? Did you, have you noticed any significant things just in the lo- limited time you've been with them? Yeah, so the team, um, man, they've honestly just grown. Like When I say the team, I know it's hard for me for listeners because they're not – in the race shops and they don't see the behind the scenes stuff as much, you know, as like, obviously like we do, but just their shop, they have a brand new building. They actually have three buildings. They're, they're going to pick up equipment uh, this next week. They're getting their own dyno. Uh, Just, I think they're getting a suspension dyno, an engine dyno. They're just really growing. The building is new and big, multiple offices. And, you know, it's when I worked for them before, it was like, you know, like a two or three car garage, not at their house, but like a little thing on the side of, you know, Aaron, Dustin's dad, where his actual, one of his businesses are. It was like a side garage to one of his businesses. Now the team has its own, you know, what and their own building. They're going to grow into two more buildings next door. Um, they have way more staff. Um, they've hired Larry, you know, a, a team manager. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave Cruz, their, you know, their suspension guy. Uh, Jamie from Twisted is doing the engine stuff. And um, now they've brought me on, you know, obviously for the time being as a racer slash tester and in the future testing and, you know, whatever that kind of grows into. So they're just really growing as a team and as an organization. Um, So on that side of things, it's just really expanded. They're just growing and growing. They have more riders. They're going to have 250 riders this year. They're doing World Supercross and Outdoors and AMA Supercross. It's just growing, right? So from that standpoint, it's it, it's awesome to see that. Um, from the bike standpoint, the bike is basically the same bike. You know, I think uh, Suzuki updated it in 2018. So I was there in 19. So the bike is really unchanged from a productive, from an OEM production standpoint. But to be honest, um, some stuff that I changed on the bike back in 19 that I really liked, 
I kind of brought some of that back um, in terms of like, just to get a little specific, like some engine mounts. Um, we kind of custom made stuff back in 19 that I tested back then that I really liked. We brought that back. Um, they they kind of went away from that. I think since I left, um, they still had some sitting around. I said, hey, let's put those back on. It was way better. I can't eat seems to think it's better. Yeah. I think some of the other riders, uh, Brandon, before he got hurt, uh, I think he actually liked it as well. Um, I've done some, the, the engine has changed a lot because Jamie wasn't doing the engine uh, from Twisted back in the day. So that has changed quite a bit. Um, I got on it. I've already made a few changes that Kenny's going to be testing here in the next week or so that I think uh, might be better. Um, the suspension, it was Olin's when I was there before they're now based on factory Shoa. They've hired Dave Cruz, um, which for those that don't know, he was like a factory Cowie, um, you know, a factory suspension guy, a very, very good suspension guy, you know, good suspension with Shoa. Um, so that's improved. It, it's like I said, just as a whole, it's improving looking like they're going to have, I don't know if I speak too soon, but multiple semis and whatever in the pits and yeah, I heard um, that. A two fifty tr- a two fifty so truck it's, it's and a awesome four fifty truck. Oh, sorry. A two fifty truck and a four fifty truck is what I heard. Uh maybe not. Okay. It's gonna be two. I'll leave it at that. I'll let you guys okay listen to the rest. All but right. yes, uh, it looks like two. Um but maybe not as simple as two fifty four fifty as we would think maybe. Uh just because of some potential age for some guys and other sponsorship conflicts with others. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, I, don't yeah. I don't want to get into too much. Good no. trouble. So yeah, there we'll, was, we'll, it'll be out soon. Yeah. 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 I think, I think math has kind of talked about it Monday night and, and Michael yeah. Lindsay was on the phone with him. They discussed it a little bit. So I think they, they kind of have an idea what's going to happen. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Suzuki seemed like factory Suzuki seemed like they had the OEM seemed like they had kind of pulled away from, promoting really putting a lot of money into the the professional dirt motocross supercross and even pulled out of world uh moto gtp a little bit i think um does it seem like from what you've heard that suzuki's back in like they're really gonna make a push or is this more dustin and hep really just trying to make a big push um i think maybe a little bit of both i don't want to speak too much on it just because I, I'm still a little bit new, so mm-hmm. I, I haven't gotten into that department a whole lot yet. Um, but honestly, I think it's a little bit of both, you know, with Progressive and Twisted T um, and other sponsors all stepping up. Um, it, it They're just in a growing spot. They have great sponsors on board. Um, I think there's new ones still coming that we haven't even heard yet. Um, it's it there's just they're growing from a spot an outside sponsor standpoint and i think suzuki sees that again i'm just speaking you know don't don't quote me on it whatever but i think suzuki sees that with kenny i I, coming there i don't know that anybody kenny the team suzuki really expected him to i don't want to say expected him but really thought is he really going to do it you know is that you know knowing he had other offers and how well he just did in paris on the on his honda i don't know that anybody really Obviously, everybody hoped for it, but no one, I don't think anybody could honestly tell you they expected him to do it, right? So, I agree. So, I think with him doing it, um, I think, from what I've heard, again, it's not my department, but the little bits I've heard and overheard, I think Suzuki is really excited that Kenny's going to be there, and what Dustin and Aaron and the whole HEP team, PMG, I guess I could call it even now, um, what they're doing just as a whole with where they're at, the sponsorship they've gotten um, from a lot of sponsors coming on board, what the effort that the team is putting in along with Kenny coming there and them just upping the program. I think Suzuki is really excited and appreciates what they're doing. Um, And I think, and I hope that that's going to get Suzuki. I think it already has is getting Suzuki. You know, I think they're really pleased with it. And I I think, and I hope that that's going to, lead to just more and more from the Suzuki side. You know, I, th- I think at the end of the day, we're all going to do our best no matter what. And I hope, and I hope that that excites Suzuki even more than they already are mm-hmm. to just keep, you know, keep going. So yeah, yeah. let's get an East start on that thing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, hey, to be honest, we've worked, they worked really hard and they've even, like I said, some, some engine changes and stuff we've done, you know, 
yeah. knock on wood, whatever you call it, the thing starts like first kick every time. You know, <laughs> Great. You know, 99% of the time, it, it's been really good. So, uh, good. yeah, we'll, we'll try to keep that good, you know, as much as we can. Yeah. All right. HEP is a California based team. You're in Florida. I, I, you're staying in Florida. I'm not even going to ask that question. I can't, no way you're moving the whole family out. That's not easy though. When you need to ship parts and engines and back and forth, uh, I, I guess you guys have that figured out. Yeah. So again, just, I, I you know, me, I've been open book and honest. So back into the conversation when I did the testing the first like three days I was out here before Kenny ever came out here. My initial, you know, days of testing with them. Like I said, initially I was like, it was just a one year offer to be a racer. And I'm like, well, like I said, maybe it doesn't make sense. But when they brought that up to me and said, Hey, look, we want you to be here with us more long term, testing, doing you know, racing, but also doing this other stuff as well. I was like, I told them, I'm like, that's amazing. I love that. That's perfect for what I could see myself doing, what I would love to do, right? So that's what I told them. I said, but before we even talk money or anything, any type of terms, when they said that to me, like I said, I said, that's amazing. I love that. I love the idea. That's perfect. I said, but I'll just be upfront and honest. I'm not moving, not moving my family, not moving to California. You know, obviously I can be here. I'm here right now, but I'm not moving. And they were Dustin and Aaron, they're family people. You know, Dustin was a racer. You know, Aaron's his dad. They put on races and promote races. And Dustin was a AMA Supercross racer, you know, so they get it. Um, they're very family oriented and, you know, that type of people. And when I told them that, they're like, no, we don't, you don't have to move here. We don't expect that. You may have to be out here for a week or two at a time, you know, doing stuff. And I'm like, that's totally fine. No problem. I totally understand that. I'm good with that. I just, I was upfront with that and they were totally cool with that. And, and like I said, that's, it's, it's awesome. It's just a perfect, like I said, it's just a perfect opportunity for me. Yeah. Um, and I think for them as well, like I said, they're in a growing period. I can help there. It's perfect for me. I hope perfect for them. Um, and then to be honest, when Kenny was like, Hey man, I'm on board, I'm doing this. I'm like, we already ride together. We train together. And it really makes sense from a team standpoint too, that we're both, can be in Florida testing and we can be in California testing, you know, so it's, it's going to be really good. The new rider, I won't say his name. You maybe already have. I don't even know, honestly, that if anything's official. Um, I know just things are, things are getting figured out. I don't know. Again, not my department right now. So I think they're figuring things out. He may also be in Florida quite a bit as well, which kind of makes it cool for the team. You know, we'll spend a lot of time in Florida with Tampa and Daytona in a week off, you know, during the season this year. So, that, that makes it kind of cool. We can all be in one place riding together here and in California. So yeah, it's, it's, it should be really cool, you know, dynamic, you know, for the team. Of course, you know, I'm pumped for you. I'm excited. So I want to tell you, congratulations. Uh, I got one yep. more question and it's a, it's a totally different topic, but I, I saw on your Instagram a while back on November, you got to do a, a great American teaching. I think is what it's called at pride elementary with, with Feld. That was pretty cool. You got to go spend some a day with the kids at the elementary. How'd that come about? What was that like? Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, yeah. For those that saw it or didn't see it. Yeah. I got to do, you know what they call the great American teaching. And I don't know for the people that are listening, I'm sure some of them uh, have, but I remember when I was a kid, you know, in school and they did the great American teaching and, you know, firefighters and cops, uh, you know, police officers and, doctors or you know anything you know any different you know job occupations you know people would come in they tell you you know you're in your class they'll come in and talk to you for you know 30 minutes tell you about their job and what they do and you know as a kid in school it was really cool you know the firefighters got to go go see their fire truck and talk to them and do that stuff i love that as a kid um always enjoyed that just memories you know they're growing up in school i i remember that day and it was really cool so Sean Brennan from Feld, who does a lot of the, I think, what would be PR and, you know, promotion and stuff for Feld. Um, he, you know, Feld, their office is only about 45 minutes from me in Tampa. So Sean and those guys and Feld are pretty local to me. Uh, I guess I didn't even know this, but I, I believe Sean's wife is a school teacher. She teaches at a school in Tampa. And he was like, hey, man, I'm going to go do this thing. I've done it the last couple of years. I love to have an actual racer there with me. Would you be willing to do it? And I was like, Hey man, when is it? Yeah, I'm available. I'd love to do it. Um, we brought my bike in and man, I 
I think I went to school at like six in the morning. We were there from like 7 a.m. to like three o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. We have like 30 minute rotations of classes just coming in. And we spoke to, I think, over 300 or 350 kids that day, just about Supercross, what it is, what I do, you know, working hard and training and eating right. And, you know, no matter what you want to do, whether it's a motorcycle racer or anything in life, it was, uh, you know, work hard, be disciplined and, you know, you can do anything you want. You know, I'm a dirt bike rider and that's what I get to do and just teaching them, you know, some hopefully life skills and lessons and values and stuff like that. So it was just, it was a great opportunity to give back. And like I said, I remember doing that as a kid. So when Sean brought that opportunity to me, I was like, if I'm able a hundred percent, I'm in, I would love to go do it. So we, uh, we did it. We had a great time. Um, hopefully impacted a lot of kids lives, you know, for their future. And we've even talked about trying to do it in cities that we go to, you know, for Supercross, you know, as we travel and try to go in and, and share our world and what we do with kids, you know, you never know what kids are going through at home and, you know, things like that. And me having kids of my own in school, you know, if you can impact them positively in any way, you know, that's a, an opportunity that I would love to do. So, yeah, we did it. It was awesome. And, uh, yeah, we hope to do more more in the future. So, yeah, we'll see. Very cool, man. Well, again, you know, we every time we talk, I'm a big fan. So I just, I love that you're going to be back racing on a factory team and have a couple years locked in. I'm, I'm very, very happy for you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I know you're, you're OG and, <laughs> and you know, the, the typical chiz, man, it's the week before Anaheim. We're still yep. figuring stuff out, you know, whatever, but uh, yeah, we might still be testing and figuring stuff out on that end, but yeah, it's, it's awesome for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, for that as well and thank you to them to dustin aaron larry everybody at hap all the sponsors you know for the opportunity um yeah it's nice to kind of have a home you know for the for the for the future and in, in, in time to come and really, like i said really thankful for the opportunity looking forward to growing adding value to the team and and everybody associated with it um yeah just really excited and and thank you i appreciate it absolutely thanks for your time man have a safe flight and yeah get home to the family and your babies Yep, I will. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. We'll see you here before we know it. It's right around the corner. We'll see you soon. Okay, thanks, man. See ya. See ya.